All right, now that I've locked in some of my darker shadows, I'm gonna come in with my second mid-tone, which is that pinkish magenta color. It's a little bit like that. And I'm gonna kind of softly blend it a little bit, just a little bit into my shadows. Kind of feather it out. Cause I can always come in with mid-tone number one paint over that. Interesting thing about watercolors, guys, the more water you add, the more diluted the color is. See how that's a really pale pink compared to that over there? It's because I added more water. Again, you can always go darker, but it's hard to go lighter. I'm going to come up into his pink nose. Fun fact, the labs can have different kinds of noses. My lab Jenny has a really pale pink nose. It stays that way all year. It's called a Dudley nose. Duncan, however, started out with a black nose, but during the winter when he doesn't get as much sun, it lightens up because he doesn't have as much melanin in his nose. And they call that a snow nose. I'm gonna come back in, less water now. Really darken up that nose. If I want to, I can even come back to my shadow color, which is that purple. Mix a little bit in there. Change it up. And set it apart from the rest of his snout. What I'm doing right now is called wet on wet blending. I'm kind of letting the colors pool and mix together on their own. Eventually I might go in once this area is dry and do some more stippling with color, just to give him that texture on his nose. So looking at my photograph, I'm gonna start to come in the areas around his nose and his eyes and brush those up. Cause like we talked about, we don't want Duncan to have bags under his eyes. So I'm gonna go right over those shadows and kind of feather out. I'm not going too far because if you look at the picture, he's got a really, a lot of really light areas right before his ears. Come in around, he's got kind of this light shadow right above his brow ridge. And again, the more water you add, the lighter your color will be. The less water you add, the darker it will be. I'm kind of pulling that triangle shape. I'm gonna leave this spot a little lighter for mid-tone number one, because the sun is catching that a little bit more in the picture. You might want cleaner brush strokes. Like some artists really like to block in their shapes and leave clean, smooth lines and that's cool. That's a cool style, but it's not for me. I like very feathery light strokes to blend. Just gonna keep on keeping on. And I'm trying to avoid those areas where I see it's really light. Don't forget the way you move your brush matters. If your animal doesn't have a furry texture, say it has a scaly texture, you might want to move your brush more in a circular or dotted motion. If 
your animal is smooth, make sure your uh, brush strokes are kind of like running together, not overlapping like mine are. I very much like painting fishies and doggies, but they're very different textures and you want to keep that in mind. Kind of come around here just to give us a better idea that he is a fluffy boy. He sheds everywhere. Again, see how much of a range I can get? I don't know if you guys can see the bottom between how light this magenta is and how dark I went up here, just by the amount of water I add. Now I'm gonna come in and add my midtones really quick. Or rather, midtone number one. 